So in this video, we are going to do some practice asymptote problems. So the first question is, find any vertical, horizontal, and or oblique asymptotes in the following function. The function equals x squared plus 3x plus 1 over 4x squared minus 9. So let's first find the vertical asymptote, which is the easiest. Remember, with the vertical asymptote, what we want to look at is the denominator only. So let's circle that. And to find the vertical asymptote, we have to set the denominator of the function equal to 0. So 4x squared minus 9 equals 0. 4x squared equals 9. x squared equals 9 over 4. x equals plus or minus 3 over 2. So we have two vertical asymptotes. We have positive 3 over 2 and we have negative 3 over 2. Remember all we did was we focused on the denominator of the function and we set that equal to 0. So now let's do the horizontal asymptote. Notice that in the function, the highest power variable in the numerator is the same as the highest power, power variable in the denominator. If you identify each of these, we get x squared and 4x squared. To find the horizontal asymptote, remember, a horizontal asymptote exists if they're equal power, and they are equal power, so now we have to look at the ratio between the numerator, numerator and, and the denominator, and if you notice, in front of the x squared is a 1, in front of this x squared is a 4, so the horizontal asymptote is 1 over 4. Now for the oblique asymptote, remember I told you that the horizontal asymptote and the oblique asymptote are mutually exclusive, meaning that if there's a horizontal asymptote, there is no oblique asymptote. So in this case, there is no oblique asymptote. The second question is the same as the first, except it's f of x equals x plus 3 over x squared plus 9. Again, let's do the vertical asymptote first since it's easiest. Remember, for, for the vertical asymptote, we look at the de denominator, so let's just focus on that. And we have to set the denominator equal to 0, so we get x squared plus 9 equals 0, x squared equals negative 9, and x equals the root of negative 9. However, we cannot take the square root of a negative number. So this does not exist, and since we have to take the square root of a negative number, it, which we cannot, the vertical asymptote does not exist for this function. So D and E. Let's look for the horizontal asymptote. So for the horizontal asymptote, we have to focus on the highest power variable in both the numerator and the denominator. If we circle both of them, we get x in the top and x squared in the, in the denominator. Notice how the power in the bottom is higher than the power at the top. So automatically, the bottom will work will outrun the top in the long run, so the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. This is true for any function in which the denominator has a higher power than the numerator. The horizontal asymptote would always be y equals 0. Just like the previous problem, if there's a horizontal asymptote, there is no oblique asymptote, so there you go. Our last problem is the following. f of x equals x squared minus 6x plus 7 over x plus 5. And we need, we need to find the asymptotes. Let's start again with the vertical asymptotes since that's the easiest. Remember, for the vertical asymptote, we're focusing on the denominator and setting that equal to 0. So x plus 5 equals 0. x equals negative 5. That is our vertical asymptote. Now let's go to a horizontal asymptote. Notice that if we circle the two highest powers in both the top and the bottom, the power in the top in the numerator is greater than the highest power in the denominator. So there is no vertical asymptote. Uh, there is no horizontal asymptote, sorry. And horizontal asymptote only occurs if the powers are equal to each other or the bottom, the power in the bottom is higher than the power in the top. In that case, the horizontal asymptote would be y equals 0. So let's do the oblique asymptote now. And remember for the oblique asymptote, to figure out the oblique asymptote, we have to divide the denominator into the numerator. And we use the oblique asymptote if the numerator is, has a higher power than the denominator. So in this case, we're dividing x plus 5 into x squared minus 6x plus 7. And you, I'm going to use a long division to do this. So outside goes, actually, let me just write that over here. So we got some total using long division. Remember, x plus 5 goes out here. And what you're dividing it into goes inside. How many x's go in x squared? x, x squared plus 5x, remember you're subtracting down, x squared minus x squared is 0, negative 6x minus 5x, 
is negative 11x. Bring down the 7, plus 7. How many x's go to negative 11x? Negative 11, and you get negative 11x minus 55. Remember, you're subtracting. Negative 11x minus negative 11x is 0. 7 minus minus 55 is 62. So we get, this is what we get. So we get x minus 11 plus a remainder of 62. Remember, anytime you get a remainder like this, you got to put this over what you're dividing by, over x plus 5. However, anytime you find the oblique asymptote, this is called the polynomial part of it, and we never need that because in the long run, this would equal 0 because if you look at the denominator, that has a variable. So as you go on to infinity, the bottom will become infinity, but the top will stay at 62. Infinity is obviously so much larger than 62, so this entire thing would become 0. So we can ignore this part, and this would be y equals x minus 11 would be equal to our oblique asymptote. Thank you guys for watching and please comment and subscribe below.